Dr. Ken here with you again. We're up to uh, electromagnetism lesson number eight and our exercise tutorial. How the video works. Step one, I'll ask a question. You pause the video and have a go at answering it. Step two, continue to play the video. I'll give you a hint about how you can get to the answer if that's required. Then again, you pause and try and answer. Step three, continue playing the video and I will give you an answer and an explanation. That's the power behind the system. And then continue to play the video for the next question. So on and so forth. So here's the first one. Question one, the critical speed of a generator is the speed at which what happens? A, damage will occur due to centrifugal forces. B, the bearings will overheat. C, the peripheral speed of the commutator becomes too high, or D, the EMF begins to build up. So what is the critical speed? A, B, C, or D? Here's your hint. Are we thinking minimum or maximum speed? So critical probably means the minimum speed at which something happens. And here's the EMF. The answer, I should say, the answer is the EMF begins to build up. So that's the critical speed. The critical speed, you've got to have enough speed to start to build up the EMF. Question two, a shunt generator is driven at a fixed speed. If the flux is reduced by 50% of the initial value, the generated EMF will be what? How will it respond? It will be quartered halved, doubled, or unchanged? That's A, B, C, or D. Pause here. So again, are we thinking maximums or minimum speed? And the answer is halved. So it's directly proportional. The generator is driven at a fixed speed. If the flux is reduced by 50% of the initial value, the generated EMF will reduce. So if you reduce the amount of flux by half, you'll halve the voltage because the two are directly related to each other. Question three, a separately excited generator has A, a field connected in parallel with the armature, B, a field connected to another source, C, an energy supplied from the armature, or D, the field connected in series with the armature. So question three, a separately excited generator has which of these four characteristics? Pause here. So do yourself a quick circuit diagram. What does a separately excited generator look like? So the answer is B, the field is connected to a completely separate or other source. So A, the field connected in parallel with the armature means that it's going to have to self excite. Energy supplied from the armature, that's a gain whether it's in series or parallel, it's supplied from the armature, and D, the field connected in series with the armature, again, getting current from the internal armature. So only B fitted the requirement. Question four, the terminal voltage of a shunt generator may be controlled by a variable resistor connected how? A, in parallel with the shunt field, B, in series parallel with the shunt field, C in series with the shunt field, or D in parallel with the armature. So how do we control the terminal voltage of a shunt generator? A, B, C, or D? Draw the circuit diagram and think about what has to be controlled to achieve the effect that we're looking at here. So draw a little circuit diagram and think about how to achieve the effect. The 
The answer is in series parallel with the shunt field. So I'll do you a quick little diagram if you didn't have time to do one. So they told us it was a shunt generator. So here's the shunt generator. Let's do it just a quick armature. Here's our armature. And here's the shunt field. And our, our field itself. And I could put a variable resistor in here to restrict the current. Or I could also put a variable resistor across it to deviate some of the current. So this method deviates the current. This method restricts the current. Anyway, either method reduces the amount of current through the field, therefore using it to uh, adjust the terminal voltage of my machine out here as we go. Five, a shunt generator is driven at a constant speed, can only have its terminal voltage maintained at a constant value for an increase in load by. A, decreasing the number of turns. C, increasing the main field flux. C, decreasing the main field flux. D, increasing the number of parallel paths in the armature. So again, think this one through. A shunt generator driven by a constant speed can have its terminal voltage maintained at a constant value for an increase in load by. So write out your formula for E. How do you get, what's the formula for E? What things, what proportions can you play with? So the only way you can do it is by increasing the main field flux. So you've got to find a way of increasing the field flux as the load goes up, because as the load goes up, it wants to pull the terminal voltage down and the only way you get the terminal voltage back up is by increasing the main field flux. Question 6. Decreasing the resistance of a field rear stack in a shunt generator will cause what? Terminal voltage to decrease. B. Generator will overspeed. C, terminal voltage will increase, or D, the generator will stall, come to a stop. Here's your hint. Again, what's the formula for E? So, our formula for our motor. Our terminal voltage will increase. Decreasing the resistance of the rear stack means you're going to get more current through it. More current through it means you're going to get more current through the field winding, which is going to put more flux across the generator, which is going to increase the voltage at the terminals. Question 7. Which expression describes the regulation of a generator? In other words, What's the formula for the regulation of a generator? So, hint, what is proportional and what is inversely proportional? So think about what goes up and what goes down and what's got to be subtracted from what in response to what. And the answer is B. It's the voltage across the armature, EG, minus the voltage at the terminal on the voltage at the terminal. Gives you the regulation because you're working out how much the voltage will drop. Question 8. 
Question 8. The external voltage characteristics of a separately excited generator will do what? They'll fall slightly. A is unchanged. B falls sharply. C or D rises slightly. Here's your hint. External excitation means you have less control. So what do you think might happen? Fall slightly. Because it's externally provided, as you load up, the external voltage characteristic means it's going to fall a little bit. You remember the curve? bit like this. Started out high, stayed flat, then started to drop away. And that was full load there. So full load volts against full load current. At that point is where it crossed us over. So it just falls slightly. This is the fall here, slightly. Question 9. How may the magnitude of the voltage produced by a generator be controlled? Again, what's the formula for E? So what are the things that we could control in that formula to control the magnitude of the voltage produced by the generator? The only things that make any difference are the speed variation, how fast the armature is spinning, that means how fast the conductors are cutting the magnetic field, and the field strength, the amount of flux being generated by the field, are the only two things that you can control. You can either change the speed, or you can change the field strength. Typically we change the field strength to change the voltage. So that brings us to the end of Electromagnetism Lesson 8, the exercise tutorials. I hope you've gained a little more insight from doing those questions.